Oh, Pops here. I'm sitting here about 6.15 in the evening enjoying the very first pipe that I ever bought back in 1983. It's a 230 made in the USA Alpha Big Boy. If you know anything about them, at one point they were owned by a company out of Israel. At one point they were owned by the Lane Company. At one point they were made right here in the United States. This one was made in the United States. And because I'm the vanilla bean that I am, I'm smoking some Sutliff. Black Kathy. A real man's Cavendish. And in keeping with the black theme, black coffee. It's been one heck of a day. I got a phone call from a buddy of mine that I smoke a pipe with some time ago this old feller gave me three Monte Cristo cigars I'm not much of a cigar fan but he gave me three Monte Cristos and I've stored them and uh, haven't smoked them but I've Put them in a safe, dry place. And I've kept hope of them. Well, he gave me a call today and said that his car broke down. And he drives an old classic car, an old, uh, old muscle car. He said, I'm in a dilemma. He said, I gotta get to work. I gotta get to work. Gotta be there in 10, 15 minutes. He said, I don't know what's wrong with my car. So I went over there. Sure enough, his car wouldn't start. But it's it's an old car. He said, it might even be that it's out of gas. He said, the gas gauge doesn't work right. So I told him, I said, look, I'm free today. Let me just give you a ride on to work. I'll come back over here and I'll uh, I'll put some gas in your car and see if I can get it started. And if I do... I'll just bring the car to you, and I'll take the trolley home. We've got, uh, it's called, a, they call it a rover here in town. They call it a rover. It's a, um, um, open air trolley. It's automotive. I mean, uh, um, it's a motorized trolley. Runs through the city, but it's open air trolley. And they retire it. They're fixing to retire it here at 1st of November. And, um, uh, pull out the, uh, I mean, run the bus schedule routes. But during the summer, they run the open air trolleys. And I always like riding on the open air trolleys. They're they're real neat. Well, they, first of all, they allow you to smoke on them, but not on the buses. But anyway, I told him, you know, if I could get it started, I'd bring it to him. Anyway, um, I, uh, I took him to work, and then <clears throat> on the way back, I drove to the nearest um, local uh, hardware store or home improvement store, and I was standing in line waiting to pay for a gas can, and there's a guy in front of me was arguing with the man in front of or behind the counter about some bricks that he had bought. Said he had built him a house and ordered some bricks from them and uh, said that he had calculated these bricks and calculated these and counted these bricks and he wanted to get them 
done before winter set in. And all oh, they was having a row and a row and a row going around and around about these bricks. And uh, I don't know why they didn't just open up another register. But they went on and on and on about these darn bricks. He kept telling him, he said, Mister, he said, our bricks come in bundles of ten, I mean, of a thousand bricks, and they're bound with wire. And man said, yes, I know. He said, I had it calculated where I needed 10,000 bricks. He said, I needed 10,000 exactly. And I'm thinking, now who needs 10,000 exactly? Anyway, he said, he said, did you receive your order? And he said, yes. He said, and I, I laid the bricks and I'm one brick shy. He said, I, I, he said, I just need one brick. He said, if I could just get one brick. And I'm thinking, poor guy. I mean, if that's really the case, give the man one brick. One brick. But they kept going around and around and around. And he kept telling him, he said, the trucks that we haul these bricks on, they put two rows of bundles and there's four in a row. And then on the back row, they're too high. So that's 10 bundles. That's 10,000 on the truck. And he kept going through this with the guy. And he said, we delivered your bricks and you got 10,000 brick. And the guy kept going back at him. He said, but I, I had it calculated. Anyway, they kept going. Anyway, to make a long story short, if it ain't too late for that, he told him, he said, uh, he said, I counted them and I came down to the last cut. I only had to make five cuts for the window corners. And he even laid out the pieces that he'd cut on the counter there. And it wouldn't have been so bad if the guy behind the counter had called the manager. But he come up with this snide line and he thought it was a joke. He told the man, he said, one of the bands must have worked loose on the truck and a brick fell off the truck. He said, mister, you're just one brick shy of a load. And I thought to myself, I said, well, you son of a gun. And he started laughing so loud. And about that time, a lady opened up another register and people started lining up behind me. So I scooted on over. And paid for my gas can. Brick fell off a truck, one brick shy of a load. I just wanted to smack that man. Anyway, on the way to my brother's house, I stopped and got gas, poured gas in his car, and uh, finally got his old Pontiac started and took it to him, left my Jeep in his driveway, and took it to him and gave him the keys and went outside and was standing there waiting at the trolley stop. And this lady was standing there waiting at the same trolley stop. And she had a dog with her, one of these long haired dogs. And she was sitting on the bench beside me. And I got on the trolley when it stopped and I got up and walked all the way up to the front of the trolley. And I sat down. And I just happened to reach in my pocket and pull out one of these Monte Cristos and stuck it in my mouth and lit it. The trolley was empty. It was empty. That woman could have sat anywhere on that trolley. She walked up and sat right beside me. We start going down the road.
like I wasn't upset enough already. Already been tough enough day. Well, the smoke of that cigar was blowing in her face. I will give you that. But she got to coughing and a wheezing and a carrying on and a yow yow. And that was a friendly little dog. It was a sweet little dog. And it got to licking me on my beard and climbing all over my arm. And it'd been a while since she'd had that dog's nails done. But it got to scratching on the side of my neck. Well, she looked up at me and she said, Mister, what are you a smoking on? And I said, it's a Monte Cristo, ma'am. She said, that, that is the cheapest smelling thing I ever smelled. And I said, no, ma'am, it, it's not a cheap cigar. I said, it's, it's, not a, it's not a real expensive cigar, but it's not a cheap cigar. And she said, you're going to have to put that out. And I said, well, no, ma'am, I'm not. I'm not going to have to. And, you know, it'd been a different story if she'd asked me politely to. I did invite her to move. I did tell her you didn't have to come in here and sit right beside me. I was polite about it. We went on another block or two, stopped, and several other people got on. Matter of fact, one guy got on that was smoking. She never said a word to him. We went another block or two, and she looked over at me, and she said, All right, buddy, you're going to have to get rid of that cigar. And I said, Well, I'll tell you what. That dog's about to claw a hole in the side of my neck. I'm fixing to be bleeding from my jugular. I'll throw the cigarette off the train or off the trolley if you'll throw the dog off. Her eyes got big and I didn't intend for her to throw that dog off. I just wanted to shut her up. We went on a couple more blocks. Be honest with you, we was almost back to within a walking distance of my brother's house. I was fixing to get off and go to my Jeep, but we had one more stop, and she looked over at me and she said, all right, pal, the cigar's got to go, and at that point, I was beside myself, without cussing at her, I said, in no uncertain terms, I said, okay, lady, the dog for the cigar. And she said, you got it. I never thought she'd do it. Next thing I know, she's throwing the dog off the trolley. When she did that, <clears throat> I threw the cigar off. I, I had no choice. I looked make sure the dog was all right. Sure enough, it landed in the grass and it got up and it started running after the trolley. Poor thing. Well, anyway, we went another about a half a mile and it came to my stop and I was gonna get off. About the time the doors opened, she got off the trolley, same place I did, and it surprised the heck out of me. We looked down the road, and sure enough, here come that little dog. And when we both got off at the same time, she looked up at me, and she said, well, help me catch it. Help me catch it. Guess what he had in his mouth? <laughs> you wouldn't believe it. Not unless you saw it. Brickett fell off that truck earlier. I'm old Pops.